Starting from August of 2024, there have been several changes to the Replit Starter Plan. Now, basically, Starter Plan is the free plan that a lot of students use for understandable reasons. It turns out that now the Starter Plan is limited to having only three ripples. Uh, this particularly is not a very big problem, I think, for beginners because the programs are generally quite self-contained, quite small. Um, I'm linking here a video where we talk about how we can use a single ripple to create all these different Python programs. The one uh, change that is I'm that is a focus of this video that I'm going to talk about in this video, however, is this thing about the development time. As this email says, the starter plan is limited to 600 development minutes per minute. Now, this was, like I said, effective 2024 August. Let's try to understand what does this mean? How can I sort of monitor my development time and what do I do? Uh, you know, how do I sort of work around this whole situation? First, let's understand what does development minutes really mean? Well, as the name suggests, development minutes basically are the minutes we are spending developing projects, which means that every time I create a ripple, I am, let's say, editing this ripple. I am, you know, counting towards my develop minutes. And that's not a surprise at all, because if you look at this, you know, uh, it tells you the resources that have been allocated to you. So kind of they are seeing, you know, uh, how many resources you're using and they are now limiting it to, let's say, a certain time. How can I monitor what minutes I've used? Well, I can go to my account. So I can click on this home here. I can go to my account and I click on the tab called usage. This usage tells me a lot of information. First thing first, it tells me the usage period. So every account is linked to the usage period, which is, as my as I understand, is a month. So for example, for me, it's going from October 1st to November 1st. So it resets in eight days. Uh, this is an important, let's say, uh, thing to keep in mind. It also tells me how many development minutes I've used. So for example, I have used, uh, maybe in this time, I've used 2000 minutes of development. Not a problem for me right now in this account because notice this is a core account and hence there is no quota. Even for starter accounts, in fact, such information is available. So again, I have another account, this is a starter account. I have gone into the usage and I'm looking at the usage period. For this account, it's 21st October to 21st November. I guess it's different for every account. So make sure you look at the one that is relevant to you. Uh, it resets in 28 days uh, because, you know, it just kind of got over. It turns out that since the last three days, I guess I've not used much. So, you know, it is my usage is zero, but there is a quota of 1200. Now, this itself is a little bit surprising to me because, you know, um, uh, I thought it's going to be 600, but perhaps, you know, there's a, a change here, right? Nonetheless, you notice that there is a quota. Notice that there is a usage period and you can monitor this over here. So this is something that's good to be uh, you know, aware of and keep monitoring because then you know uh, where this is going. However, a question that must naturally come to your mind is, what happens if I exceed this quota? Well, it turns out if you do exceed this limit, you get this rather intimidating message on your Replit screen, which says you've used up all your Repl minutes to continue coding without interruptions and enjoy unlimited access, well, upgrade to Replit Core. Now, clearly such a message is quite unsettling, especially if, if, when we do not understand why this is coming. And that's you know why a lot of people are taken by surprise when they saw this for the first time. But the question we ask ourselves is, okay, if this does happen, what are the options available to me? Uh, let's sort of focus on that. First thing first, no need to panic. And I, I say this again, there's absolutely no need to panic because remember there's a usage cycle available with every account, even for free accounts. The account that looks frozen right now will be available to you once again, once the cycle resets. So which means we really have to just manage this time, you know, in a, a sort of the interim time to see what we can do. What are the options? Well, first thing first, of course, you know, you can join the core. Uh, but which means that becoming a paid member, um, that's a decision that a student can make. Uh, if you think that's, you know, if you're really coding using this platform really well, because code comes with its own benefits as well, uh, you can consider doing that. But if you are just learning, just starting to learn, uh, you want to stay to, let's say, being free, that's also fine. One suggestion I have for you is to try and create perhaps another account. Um, you know, I think this is doable. Of course, we can't have too many accounts. It'll get too hard to manage, but perhaps maybe two or three accounts we can manage. And we should be able to fork our earlier projects into uh, the new account. The point to keep in mind, however, all the time is that there's no need to panic. 
stay focused on your goal, which is to learn Python. And if you have that attitude, all of these can be worked around. Uh, before I wrap up, however, I will give you some suggestions, which I think will be useful for you, uh, you know, for you to manage these minutes in, uh, let's say, as you keep learning. Yeah? First thing first, be careful, be judicious, make sure you're not using, leaving any unused Ripple tabs when you're not working with them. Because, you know, you think you're not working with them, but remember, the fact that the tab is open, it may in fact be eating up your minutes without you realizing. So make sure you close up all those unused tabs. A lot of times we leave them open. We look at some project, we just leave it open um, and that doesn't count for anything, right? So be a little bit, let's say, disciplined over here. Also, you can consider using some other platforms on the sides. Now, we will still stick with Replit as a main platform, but side by side, you will, you know, there are several options that you have. You can use them because... Uh, many times we're just experimenting, we're just trying to see how some things work, you know, some simple commands, we can just use them on other platforms. So what are the other platforms that you can use? Now, first, let's look at some online options. Online options basically are just like Replit. You do not need to install anything. You can just go to a particular website and pretty much start coding there. So that way they're quite simple. For example, there is this nice platform called Python Anywhere, very nicely done. Um, there is, you know, online Python, there is programmers for a little bit more sophisticated users, let's say GitHub code spaces. Uh, there's Trinket, very nicely done as well. And there's this Python and Turtle. Now you will find that a lot of Python that we are using as beginners, uh, you know, standard Python will pretty much run in any of these. There will be some differences, however, sometimes you'll find that some modules are not available. Sometimes you'll find that, you know, uh, escape characters render differently and so on. So be ready for that. You know, but nonetheless, a lot of work can be done here. Um, I specifically mentioned Trinket and Python and Turtle because as you will realize when you play with these online options that many times Turtle, Tkinter or such, let's say stuff which requires a graphical sort of gives you graphical interface, they do not work very well. But for these two, they sort of work. Yeah, so that's one option. But uh, this is not all. If you are more adventurous, you want to kind of explore things more deeply, you can even look at offline editors. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, these are things that you must download to your computer, say maybe your laptop or your desktop, install Python in your laptop and then start coding. In fact, this is how a lot of people used to code before these uh, you know, online options became, uh, let's say, available. So there's visual code, there is PyCharm, there is the good old idle. The point is there are many, many, many options out there which you can use along with your uh, replit to sort of manage your code minutes, right? And, you know, be, uh, let's say, um, judicious about it, yeah? Now, some ideas and suggestions, which I think are particularly applicable for Ybyte students, but they may be, you know, they may be helpful to others as well. Uh, for example, while attending the class, so sometimes when you're in, you're in the class, you just want to try out a few pieces of code, you're not yet developing your project, you can probably use one of these platforms. You could be on Idle, you could be on, you know, uh, let's say any of these online platforms, which is not counting towards your replit minutes, and you can use those. Uh, like I said, a lot of code that we develop will work on these platforms, especially when we do not import external modules, like let's say dealing general Python and so on. Escape characters, however, may be rendering a bit differently. Don't worry too much about that. That's okay. Um, and some modules may not be available in all platforms. Tkinter, Turtle are special. Sometimes you'll find that these platforms may not necessarily support them. Some of them do, some of them do not. Yeah. Um, but what you can do is that, you know, like I said, experimentation you can do on these platforms. You can, in fact, consider developing certain projects. Basically, you can do it, you know, where you're using just generic Python, let's say, say for example, let's say something like a shopping cart or let's say secret messages, you know, which is just pretty much just Python. Uh, you know, uh, you can use it. You can de almost develop the entire project elsewhere, obtain the .py file and, you know, upload it to Replit for submission. However, if you are doing so, please do make sure that you're testing your final project on Replit at least once before submission. Now, at this point, a lot of you, I'm sure, are wondering that if all these options are available, then why is it that we are not moving to one of these? Why is it that we are using Replit as our main platform where we are learning? Well, the short answer to that question is that all these platforms, be it offline, be it online, have their own challenges, have their own nuances. And I think that on balance, Replit, in fact, does a fantastic job for us as far as our learning is concerned. So on balance, I think Replit is still a fantastic platform, beautifully done with very high availability of different modules with, you know, uh, special support for, let's say, Turtle, Tkinter, which I think are absolutely essential to our program. And that's why we are using this. 
So my message to all of you is that let's focus on what we are looking for, which is to learn Python. Such changes and challenges are inevitable. Uh, they always happen. In fact, we should see them as an opportunity for us to learn more. Uh, for example, about different platforms, different options, how you know uh, things are set up, um, how the entire environment comes together and so on. So those are great avenues to explore, which will make you a complete programmer. So let's view this as an opportunity. And in that note, forever enjoy coding. At YByte, we truly, truly believe that programming is a very creative journey. Uh, we learn Python programming through fun activities that expand your mind, that make you think, and that let you explore Python in great detail. Do look at our website for more details. And as always, enjoy programming. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.